Welcome to e know -how. In this video, we will look at the carrier concentrations in intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors. So, in pure silicon, where there are no um, doping uh, of impurities, so if we look at uh, the band diagram, so we said there is uh, this is the band diagram, and uh, here is the EV, which is the upper valence uh, band limit and EC is the lower conduction band limit and we said that the electrons can possess energies uh, below EV or above EC and at room temperature we said in the bonds if you look at the silicon structure and uh, you, you have the covalent bonds with the adjacent silicon atoms so some of the electrons from this could escape uh, at room temperature and they can become free electrons. So they, some of the electrons are, uh, so if you look at, let me draw with a different color. So all the electrons are here in the valence band and some of these electrons can actually possess or get energies above EC and go here. So not all of them, a few of them. And these electrons will leave holes here. So those, these are holes. So you have holes left in the, in the bonds. And so basically this is when this electron escapes, you have a hole. And these are the free electrons to move about. These, they are in the, they have energies uh, which are greater than EC. So they can move about. Now this is called, so for for each electron, for each electron that moved into the conduction band, there is a hole created. So in an intrinsic silicon without no impurities, so with no impurities, so the, the concentration of electrons say we call N and this is uh, in per centimeter cube. So number of electrons per centimeter cube. And now if you say concentration of holes which is P which is also the number of holes per centimeter cube. And in intrinsic silicon, both should be equal because for every electron that escaped uh, to the conduction band, you have a hole created. So which means N is equal to P is equal to Ni. We call this as the intrinsic concentration. So this is called the intrinsic concentration. intrinsic concentration and then this is dependent on temperature because at a higher temperature more electrons can escape say at a higher temperature some more electrons can move into the can move into the conduction band and create holes here so this intrinsic concentration in terms of a formula it is written like this so ni is some constant K, K naught, temperature to the power 3 by 2 and E power minus Eg over 2 Kt. K, this K is the Boltzmann constant here and this is again the temperature. Eg is nothing but the band gap here. So Eg is the difference between EC and EV and usually in silicon this is approximately equal to 1.1 electron volts so that is the EG here EG and T is the temperature so what it says is as the temperature increases more number of uh, electrons can go move into the conduction band create more electron hole pairs so now this Ni at, uh, at room temperature is room temperature which is 300 degrees Kelvin or 27 degrees centigrade. This is approximately equal to 1.45 times 10 power 10 uh, electrons or holes per centimeter cube. Now let's look at what happens in uh, n-type or p-type semiconductors. Let's look at an n-type semiconductor. 
In an n-type semiconductor, we said we dope the semiconductor with phosphorus. So you have the EV and EC energy levels here. And now with phosphorus, we said it creates an energy level very close to EC, which is called the donor energy level. So now what we are saying is we dope like more like 10 power 14 to 10 power 18 atoms of phosphorus per centimeter cube, which is much larger than the 10 power 10 we have. So now you got a lot of electrons that are sitting here. So assume even if it is 10 power 14, say take 10 power 14, we have all these electrons sitting here and at room temperature, they move into conduction band because they just need a little bit more energy to move into conduction band. And what happens is they create a lot of electrons. Uh, uh, like they create a surplus of electrons here. So this is in addition to, these are the electrons came from the donor. And then let me draw in another color. So these are the intrinsic electrons that were already there and then the holes corresponding to the intrinsic electrons. So now we created a lot of these additional electrons which are the com coming from the donor atoms. And what this does is, this will like inundate the, the actual number of electrons coming from the intrinsic concentration. So let ND be the, uh, the doping or number of phosphorus atoms per centimeter cube. So now your N is approximately equal to ND because that's the ND is what dominates. NI is very low which is only 10 power 10 here. We saw this NI, the in intrinsic concentration. So N is approximately equal to ND. But now what happens is uh, uh, because of this additional a lot of electrons sitting here, so they actually recombine, they fall they keep falling back into the holes and they will actually, some of the holes uh, will no longer be there because the, the hole concentration would decrease below Ni. So now P is usually written as Ni square over Nd. So now if Nd is 10 power 14, uh, N, uh, P, would, P would be much lower than, so now N is greater than, greater than Ni which is the intrinsic concentration and P would be less than less than Ni for an n-type semiconductor. Now if you look at a p-type uh, semiconductor here, now what we said is the p-type semiconductor creates a, creates, this is EV and this is EC and p-type will create an energy level, an acceptor energy level, which is closer to the valence band. So this is the low valence band. And now we had the, say initially, we had some of the holes and then the electrons due to the intrinsic concentration. Now what we do is we add a lot of, a lot of uh, spaces for electrons to occupy here using the uh, acceptor impurity like boron. Now what happens is some of these electrons that were, I will use the same, I will use this different color here. There are abundance of electrons in the valence band, right? So now these electrons will move up and occupy these positions because they need very little energy to move up. So they go there and then in turn, they create a lot of holes they create a lot of holes for uh, the valence electrons to move about. So now what happens is some of these electrons too, they fall back, they fall back into the holes created by the acceptor, they, they fall back and so they are basically erased here. So if you see, the uh, N would reduce. So now in the same way we talked about uh, uh, the N type, so now P is approximately equal to Na, which is the acceptor concentration per centimeter cube, like the boron atoms per centimeter cube. And now the N is Ni square divided by Na. And so what we say here is in the, in the P-type semiconductor, P is 
greater than greater than the intrinsic concentration n i and n is less than less than the intrinsic concentration n i. So, here the majority carriers are holes in p type and n type semiconductors the majority this is n type majority carriers are electrons. So, this is how the n type and p type semiconductors how the carrier concentration looks like. So, the carrier concentration is usually dominated by the impurity addition the N d which is the donor atoms per centimeter cube in N type and it is dominated by the acceptor atoms per centimeter cube in P type. So, this is the N a N a which is the boron atoms per centimeter cube. So, this is how the carrier concentrations vary in intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors.